Thank you so much for your company this morning. 220 Miles is a feature-length documentary about the establishment of the Waikato Women's Refuge, Te Whakaruruho, and some of the lives it has affected. Founded in 1987, this was the first Māori Women's Refuge. Joining us now is Board Chair Anna Stretton, CEO Ruahini Albert, and its manager Ariana Simpson. Welcome to you all. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. An absolute pleasure to have you here. Uh, let's start with you, Ruahini. Um, you helped set up the Waikato Women's Refuge, didn't you, over 30 years ago? Um, yes. So it's been a huge part of your life. Yes. What, what made you want to start it up? Um, it was actually a group of women uh, that were part of the Māori movement way back um, in those days, and a cry from a lot of the women that wanted to use services that were culturally um, appropriate or, or that they could be able to come in and, um, and gain support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Ariana, it was quite a battle to get it established, wasn't it? Tell us about that. Um, well, it was uniquely um, being the first Māori Women's Refuge. I mean, that was back in the late 80s. Right. So um, it was basically us trying to rationalise why we needed a Māori Women's Refuge. And what did you come up against? Um, well, during that time, you know, this wasn't long after the Springbok tour. This mm -hmm. wasn't long after the march, those types of things. And um, we'd been, I guess, conscientised around um, social issues, around um, all the issues that happened with um, Māori losing land and language and all those sorts of things. So. Mm -hmm. Um, that was the battle, really. Mm. Yeah, and I guess that's the whole reason for the documentary showcasing, you know, the journey, 220 miles. So I think right now is probably a good time to take a look at a clip. So I moved down to Hamilton um, to attend Waikato University. Between those towns, I spent a lot of my, a lot of my time growing up, my childhood. I don't know whether I'd be here today. It was just getting worse and worse and worse to the point that um, every time it happened, I'd think, this is it, I'm not going to come out of it. And it took a lot of courage, picking the right moment. But yeah, it came to the point that I just had to get out, run and live, or stay and die, really. When relationships start, they all start for very um, good reasons and people see a bright future. The arguments normally start because there is just no money. There's no money for food, there's no money to buy the bills and those arguments escalate. But sometimes it's just got to be straight out reality is two people can't live together. Mm. So Anna, you're the chair. How did you get involved? Oh, um, Ronnie and Ariana came out to see me probably five, six years ago, um, wanted me to get involved. I was well known for working with some of the philanthropic courses in the Waikato. I mean, why would you not want to get involved with this mm. wonderful woman? And um, it's just such an awesome cause. And, you know, it was off the back of the wonderful work that they do that Raw was born. So, you know, it's just an awesome space to be working in. And, um, you know, I obviously have a different set of thinking, a different set of values, um, a different mindset that I take into the space. Um, and it's been wonderful to be able to energise Refuge within the Waikato because it's, you know, and to bring our sort of more corporate thinking um, into the space and get them the assistance that they really need to mm. do. You know, it's such a vital organisation and mm. it's, you know, one of the most humbling and, you know, places to, to be involved in and I'm so proud of what they've achieved and what they do. And you've seen the movie? What did you think of it? Yeah, I have. It's, um, it's awesome. It really is. I'm incredibly proud, you know, of the, the space that they've occupied for 30 years and it's just an awesome way to celebrate this. Right, well, I'll, I'll, speaking of the film, I want to ask you this, Ariana. It, it, you know, it, I heard that clip before, and, you know, it's true, isn't it, that quite often relationships don't start off abusive, but there are some early warning signs. So what, what sort of warning signs are we talking about? Oh, there is varied as um, anything. Well, it could be um, verbal abuse, it could be... Um, not talking, it could be, um, you know, not allowing her to go out and Isolate. see family, isolating from friends, networks, that sort of thing. Could start off with a slap and then mm. um, the physical stuff increases. Mm. 
but, um, but the psychological, emotional, that's what you don't see. But that's what women wear. And that's a hard one to quantify too, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. To the outside. Um, Ruhini, how, how did you feel about the film? I mean, obviously getting, you have victims talking on the film. I mean, was it hard to get them to take part? I mean, how was that? Um, <clears throat> no, not Actually, when we asked the women um, whether they'd take part, they wanted to know whether it would make a difference for any other woman. Mm. And, um, and on that, they said, yeah, we'll do it, easy. Um, so it was for someone else. How I took it, frightened, because I didn't expect it was going to go through. <laughs> 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 um, and it was like, oh my God, it's going through. Mm. This is really going to be like a legacy, something that's created about um, our service, but more about the families that we're dealing with. Right. Mm. That's really we, why we wanted to do it, is the promotion of the service and others like us to be able to get out there so the families can connect. Because some people, unless they're in the sphere, they wouldn't even know that no. you existed, would they? No. They don't need your services, they don't know that you're there. No. Um, <clears throat> and we're quite different. So we're the largest refuge in New Zealand because we've got 42 staff, we're 24-7. Wow. Um, we work in residential, we have six safe houses, um, we work in the community and we're crisis and we work with the men. And, and what sort of services does the refuge provide? Oh, I mean, you know, there's all, the, from the point of view of the type of work that they do, I mean, they've got the safe houses, which, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, not a lot of refugees actually offer that anymore. I mean, it's more of a service that happens within the home. Um, they're working alongside a lot of the government organisations to assist and advise. Um, they've started to do a lot of advocacy now down um, within, you know, a lot of the government agencies. You know, this is an awesome refuge, and as they say, they are the biggest independent Māori women's refuge in the country, and dealing with over 130 cases a week. So, you know, it's certainly one organisation um, that, as you say, does fly under the radar if you're not in the space or not needing the service, but it's such a vital service. And unfortunately, domestic violence in, violence in this country is amplifying. It's not reducing. Mm. Um, 130 so, cases yeah, a week. 130 cases that these guys are working with. And, and you know, when you look at the history, I guess, of, of re refuse um, centres in, in New Zealand, you, know, you go back to people like Roy McKenzie, mm -hmm. And you get the sense that it's actually people power within the community that have made some effective changes over the years. Would, would you agree with that, yes. Ronnie? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, as far back as in the 80s, you know, there were a lot of uh, different ministers and the like of um, Minister Anne Hurkis, I think, was one who secured the first lot of funding for the women's refugees back then. But, and um, it's people like you that had to fight to yeah. make sure that they were aware that it was needed in the community. Yes. So, so hats off, 30 years down the yeah. track, still going strong. It's incredible. Um, Ariana, money issues obviously are something that is, is at the forefront of a lot of violent relationships. Are there other things that come through as well, though? It's not just financial issues, is it? Oh, no. It's everything from housing to um, food to, you know, I, I guess it all centres around... Uh, finance because it's whether you can afford to mm. live in a particular area, especially mm. if you want to relocate and get out of that area um, and you might not be able to, to afford, often wouldn't be able to afford any other um, area to live in. Yeah. And, and what do you want people to get out of the film, Ronnie? Um, I guess for me it would be um, the space to be able to think that there's a place that they can connect to outside of, whether it's in Waikato, but all over the place, mm. there's refuges set up. There is help, that's yep. what people have got yeah. to yep. No, there is help, but you don't need to stay in those relationships. No. Thank you so much for all coming in today. Yeah, um, there is a special screening of 220 Miles on Wednesday at Hamilton's Lido Cinema and then at the Raglan Arts Centre on Sunday with more screenings to come as well as a DVD release as well. And proceeds of this documentary will go to the Waikato Women's Refuge. Yes, please go and support it. I mean, it's sad that we need it, but it is needed, isn't it?